The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Welcome to worship this morning. We gather in the Sunday in the, in the season of Easter, the last Sunday in the season of Easter. Uh, next week is the uh, festival of Pentecost. We celebrate Pentecost Sunday. And you're invited to next Sunday see in your closet if you have an article of clothing that is red colored. Bring and wear red a shirt, pants, socks, shoes, hats, gloves, anything red. And you will, when we will be awash in a sea of red on Pentecost Sunday, the traditional color of the Holy Spirit, you know, signifying energy, passion, you know, love, deep love. You know, those, those are the associations with the color red. This uh, uh, today, uh, following worship, we gather one last time as a living the questions group. So uh, stay afterwards. So, We'll gather here in the chancel and look at the last couple of chapters in our book. Because the following week on uh, Sunday, June the 4th, we are affirming the baptism. Kira will be affirming the, her baptism, having her confirmation in, in the service on Sunday, June 4th. We pray for Kira and we bless you, Kira, and your family. Uh, the uh, Saturday evening prior, we have a potluck supper. Um, any of you are willing uh, to are invited to come who are willing and able to come come bring a dish there's a, a sign up sheet in the narthex uh, so we know who's coming and we'll eat together potluck food and uh, enjoy good food and good conversation uh, in celebration of Kira's confirmation that's on Saturday June the 3rd in the evening at five o'clock I invite you to join me now as we pray, as we pray the thanksgiving for baptism in your worship guides. Uh, we still our hearts and prepare ourselves for our worship time. Glory to you for oceans and lakes, for rivers and streams. Honor to you for waters that wash us clean, quench our thirst, and nurture both crops and creatures. Praise to you for the life-giving water of baptism, the outpouring of the spirit of the new creation. Wash away our sin and all that separates us from you. Empower our witness to your resurrection. Strengthen our resolve in seeking justice for all. Satisfy the world's need through this living water. Where drought dries the earth, bring refreshment. Where despair prevails, grant hope. Where chaos reigns, bring peace. 
We ask this through Christ, who with you and the Spirit reigns forever. Amen. Amen. We sing, Rise, O Son of Righteousness, number 657. I invite you to stand as you are. O God of glory, your Son, Jesus Christ, suffered for us and ascended to your right hand. Unite us with Christ and each other in suffering and in joy, that all the world may be drawn into your bountiful presence. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The first reading is from Acts, chapter 1, verses 6 to 14. When the apostles had come together, they asked Jesus, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. 
Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying, Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James son of Alphaeus and Simon the Zealot, and Judas son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, please, God. Psalm 68. Let God arise and let God's enemies be scattered, that those who hate God flee. A smoke is driven away, so we should drive them away. As the wax melts before the fire, so let the wicked perish at the presence of God. But let the righteous be glad and rejoice before God. Let them also be merry and joyful. Sing to God, sing praises to God's name. Exalt the one who rides the clouds. I am in thy name. Rejoice before God. In your holy habitation, O God, you are a father to orphans, defender of widows. You give a solitary home and bring forth O oh God, when you went forth before your people, when you marched through the wilderness, the earth quaked and the skies poured down rain. At the presence of God, the God of Sinai, at the presence of God, the God of Israel. You sent a bountiful rain, O oh God. You restored your inheritance when it languished. Your people found their Sing to God, O kingdoms of the earth. Sing praises to the Lord. You ride in the heavens, O God, in the ancient heavens. You set forth your voice, your mighty voice. Ascribe power to God, whose majesty is over Israel, whose strength is in the skies. How wonderful you are in your holy places, O God, Israel, giving strength and power to your people. The second reading is from 1 Peter. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that is taking place among you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice insofar as you are sharing Christ's sufferings so that you may also be glad and shout for joy when his glory is revealed. If you are reviled for the name of Christ, you are blessed, because the spirit of glory, which is the spirit of God, is resting on you. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that he may exalt you in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. Discipline yourselves, keep alert, like a roaring lion, like your adversary the devil prowls around looking for someone to devour. Resist him, steadfast in your faith, for you know that your brothers and sisters in all the world are undergoing the same kinds of suffering. And after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore support, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. I invite you now, uh, this short gospel acclamation hymn is one that we can kind of move to and tap our hand on our knee and maybe bop our head a little bit and move. It's a song of praise to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Number 172. And I invite you to stand and do a little movement as you stand, if you are able. Even as you sit, do a little movement. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 
John, the 17th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. And I begin at the 10th verse. As Jesus prays to God, Jesus says, All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. <clears throat> in my reading in Outdoor Wildlife, I came across this piece on wolves in the U.S. Midwest, reminding me of how integral the wolf is in supporting ongoing life on this planet. For example, ecologists have discovered that the existence of wolves in Yellowstone National Park ensure the maintenance of a healthy ecosystem. As top predators, wolves keep the population of deer and elk in check, right? Because wolves hunt elk and deer and eat them. Before, wolves were reintroduced into Yellowstone National Park, an overpopulation of elk had eaten so many willow trees and aspen trees and cottonwood trees right down to the ground. And this, in turn, had weakened riverbanks, causing erosion, right? The collapse of the ground next to the edges of the flowing rivers, reducing the trees available for birds to nest. And this resulted in fewer beavers with fewer resources for building dams and creating pools for fish to thrive. You see the negative cascading effect brought on by the absence of the wolf and communities of wolves and the opposite effect from their presence. Everything in balance. How each living thing, however unique and different like a wolf, allows life in all its fullness to thrive and spawn more life for future generations. It's amazing when you think about this intricately interconnected world that we live in, right? Uh, it never ceases to amaze me. A unified whole whereby each living being, so different and varied one from another, is nevertheless in a dynamic relationship with each other, generating, overall generating life. How important you are in the big scheme of things. How important I am. How important we all are in this amazingly created world. This is the world God created and a world that Jesus prays for. And in his ministry demonstrated what is needed for the world to continue existing in this dynamic harmonic whole. Love. Love for God. Love for neighbor. Relationship with God, relationship with neighbor. Reg regrettably, however, too often Christianity has been reduced to the singular. Too often faith has become focused merely on one's personal relationship with Jesus and getting to heaven. And that's it, and nothing much beyond that. Which then leads to a 
astonishing lack of care for others and the well-being of others and the well-being of creation and looking out only for oneself and one's own private self-interests with a kind of who cares about anybody else kind of attitude, right? But each of the scriptures appointed for this Sunday speak of the Christian faith as communal, in an interconnected whole, in relationship with others, in community. The scriptures remind us that we don't fly solo through this universe. We fly with each other. In the first reading in the book of Acts, the disciples are pictured as a group, gathering together, asking Jesus questions, observing his ascension together, and, quote, devoting themselves to prayer together with certain women, in verse 14. They are a group. And Jesus addresses not one individual, but all of them, telling them they collectively will receive the Holy Spirit and be sent out as witnesses to the ends of the earth, verse, 20, verse 8. And Psalm 68 underscores the fact that God is one who draws in the person who is solitary, draws in the person who is suffering alone or abandoned. God specifically draws these alone ones into a community, into a home, into a holy habitation, as the psalmist said, with others, where together they experience caring and healing community. The Christian faith is a together thing. Verse 5, in your holy habitation, O God, you are a father to orphans, defender of widows. Verse 6, you give the solitary a home and bring forth prisoners into freedom. God gathers the alone ones so that they are no longer alone, but in a home, a holy habitation. In the second reading from 1 Peter, we get a glimpse of the vast, far-reaching communities of the followers of Jesus in the first century located throughout the Mediterranean world. And the author wants to encourage these communities to remain steadfast in their identity and in their mission and to remember their connection with others. Verse 9, your brothers and sisters in all the world are undergoing the same kinds of suffering. No one is alone. No one faith community is alone on its own but forever joined together, linked by the connective tissue of the Holy Spirit. I like to think of the links between us as connective tissue. It's a doctor, medical, biological term, but I think it, for me it resonates. We are linked by the connective tissue of the Holy Spirit into a broad network of communities of mutual support in their joys and in their sorrows and sufferings each affecting or influencing the other. So when one suffers, the others suffer. When one benefits, the other benefits. In the Gospel text, Jesus paints a picture of oneness, not only oneness between him and God, but also between them and Christ's followers. So God, Jesus, and Christ's followers are linked in a, in a oneness. Verse 11, Holy Father, Jesus prays, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. Oneness, of course, doesn't mean sameness. We have to remember that. We think, oh, Jesus is calling us to assimilate all of our differences and become one sort of monolithic, homogeneous blob of sameness, where everyone sounds alike, looks alike, thinks the same. No. God created a world and humanity with an astonishing multitude of variety, color, diversity. I can't help but to think that God loves variety. Look at the world God created. You know, I, God loves variety. The oneness Jesus prays for refers to the quality of the connective tissues linking each unique human, however different, however odd, however unique, together with others, 
life-giving connective tissues containing elements of respect, of guarding the dignity of others and ourselves, of guarding the esteem and dignity of others, fostering compassionate love and care between each person and with creation. We might want to ask ourselves, these are the sort of self-examination questions. What is the quality of our connective tissues among us in our relationships? What words do we use in speaking about each other and to each other? Do we build others up or do we put them down at other people's expense? Just for whatever reason. Do we regard each other and all creation as holy and sacred, revealing in some way the face of God? Each one of us revealing the face of God, something of the face of God as we were all created in the image of God. Do we recognize differences in others as enriching rather than threatening? Are we threatened by other people's differences or are we enriched by them and drawn into further curiosity about learning about others, about people, about wolves, about elk, about deer? But whenever and wherever these connective tissues break down, and they do, this is where Jesus calls his followers, right? This is the call, the mission calls his followers to enter and to speak up and to work to restore those connective tissues. The Toronto Star recently reported on Toronto Police's annual hate crime statistical report in the Toronto Star, revealing that Toronto's Jewish community, Toronto's LGBTQ plus community, Toronto's black community were the most frequent targets of hate-motivated crimes last year in 2022. These hate-motivated crimes came in the form of actual physical assaults or and or property damage. This is the statistical report from the Toronto Police Department. And the statistics indicated that these were just the reported incidents. Many more go unreported for a number of reasons. These are lamentable, broken, connective tissues. And we pray that the Spirit may help us see where the connective tissues of dignity, love, and respect are weak or broken and make our hearts break and lament over the suffering and pain this causes. And we pray for the energy to do what we can, whatever it is we can, to answer Jesus' call to restore those connective tissues of the Spirit, to speak up and stand in solidarity with those who are cut off, and do as God would do, do as God would do, and draw all into a new home, a holy habitation where all can experience healing and dignity and respect and care, restoring those connective tissues of respect and dignity between and among all God's good creation. God, give us the grace in the eyes of our inner heart to perceive not only the unity that is there, but to restore the unity that is broken. We sing together, Lord, who the night you were betrayed in our Evangelical Lutheran worship book number 463. And I invite you to stand as you are able. Did 
spirit, one body be. Through this blessed sacrament of unity, for all your church on earth we intercede. Lord, make our sad division soon to cease. Draw us all closer, each to each we plead, by drawing all to you, O Prince of Peace. Thus may we all one bread, one body be, through this blessed sacrament of unity. And hear our prayer for wanderers from your fold. Restore them to good shepherd of the sheep. Back to the faith your saints confessed of old. And to the church still pledge that faith to keep. Soon may we all one bread, one body be. Through this blessed sacrament of unity. So, Lord, at length when sacraments shall cease, may we be one with all your church above, one with your saints in one unbroken peace, one with your saints in one unbounded love, more blessed still in peace and love to be, one with the Trinity in unity. United in the hope and joy of the resurrection, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. God of harmony, as you drew your son to your side, you draw us to you and unite us with the planet and one another. Weave your church together in a web of mutual love for the sake of the world. Today we pray for the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Jordan and the Holy Land, for peace in the Middle East, for the Anglican Diocese of Jerusalem and the Anglican Bishop, the Right Reverend Shane Parker, and the people and clergy of the Diocese of Ottawa. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. As your spirit hovered over the waters of creation, so your spirit hovers over all that you have made. Bless the water that sustains the planet and grant wisdom to use it wisely. Strengthen those who work to contain the wildfires in Alberta and British Columbia. Bring much needed rain. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You empower your people with the fire of your spirit. Challenge activists and organizers, teachers and politicians, and all in leadership to speak a message of peace and justice so that where hurt and division fester, between indigenous and settler people, black and white, rich and poor, your spirit of reconciliation may heal and bring wholeness. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You care for all your children. Show your steadfast love to those suffering isolation, especially refugees, migrants, or prisoners. Break the chains of all held fast by systemic oppression of any kind. Comfort all who are afraid or suffering from illness. Today we pray for Helen, Elaine, Kyle, Emma, 
Allison, Jeff, Kira, Carolyn, Lois, Joseph, Diane, Monica, and those we name out loud or silently in our hearts. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is We give thanks that humankind serves as your body and the world, stewarding your abundant gifts. Guide this congregation's leaders as they seek your will. We pray for our office administrator, Andy, our pastor, David, and church council members, Conrad, Elsebe, Karen, Cheryl, Ken, Carol, and Catherine. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You raise your saints to new life in Christ. We give you thanks for Jim and all your saints and our loved ones gone before us who've given us glimpses of your redeeming love. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Rejoicing in the victory of Christ's resurrection, we lift our prayers and praise to you, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let us take a moment to share the peace of Christ with one another. You may turn to each other with a slight bow, with hands together, or an elbow bump with the words, Peace of Christ be with you. I invite you to turn with me to page 107 as we begin our prayers of thanksgiving at the table. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Page 108. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again after supper he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, we pray the prayer Jesus taught us. 
in whichever language or version you prefer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Take and eat. This is the body of Christ given for you. Take and drink. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. As we share the bread and wine, I invite you to turn and sing, I Come With Joy, number 482, and then Christ Our Peace, number 1037.
Gracious God, in you we live and move and have our being. With your word and this meal of grace, you have nourished our life together. Bless these offerings and strengthen us to show your love and serve others in Jesus' name. Amen. The God of all who raised Jesus from the dead, Bless you by the power of the Holy Spirit to live in the new creation. Amen. Go to the world. We sing number 991. I invite you to stand as you are.
till the age shall end, when all the hosts of glory cry, Amen, Alleluia, Alleluia. The risen one. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> See you. Thank you. Wonderful.